Hello, and welcome to an undisclosed location. This is Murder Incorporated. I am Buddy. And this is Harley. And this is a case of Mary Floral Bell. She is a terrifying as she is interesting. A child serial killer that grows up to be an upstanding anonymous citizen. With what I can only call the opposite of love from a mother. This is another case that points a point in the nurture column. A girl that had been dealt so much pain that it seems pain is all she had to give. Thank you, buddy. That was excellent, as always. You are welcome. <laughs> Let's get started. All right. Let's do it. All right. It's hard to blame Belle for her psychopath, psychopathic tendencies when you find out about the home she was born in. Her mother was a sex worker and only 17 when Belle was born, which I had a child at 17. And let me tell you, shell shock is putting it lightly. It well, yeah, is hard, I mean, you know. Y- having a young kid when you're... Or a kid when you're young, yeah, that's that's tough as it is, especially I don't know when this was. Uh, I guess it wasn't too long ago, but sixties, sixties, all right. So, but still, I mean, no matter what, you're not ready for a kid at, in your teens. No way, no one is. No, definitely but. not. Definitely not. Um, Mary Bell's mother would leave her with family members and go up to Glasgow to work. She was a sex worker. Of course. Okay. Yep. She would have been better off had her abusive mother left her permanently with family. Mm. And oh, how they tried to get her. You know, they wanted her to live with her. They tried to get her to leave them permanently, leave her with them, but she wouldn't let her live with them. But at one point, she tried to sell her to a German woman that couldn't have children of her own. Oh, really? Yeah. At a very young age, Mary learned that crying was a weakness. She said, I don't cry anymore because it shows you're weak. And her mother would have sadomasochistic situations with men, and she would use her as a prop at the young age of four. Jeez. <laughs> so she would sell her out to men at the age of four for sexual Wow. Abuse. Yeah. Oh. She had a... I mean, this is the most abuse I've ever read in a case. Oh, jeez. This, this is... All right, we're already starting off good. Yeah. A chronic bedwetter. That's one of the, the McDonald's triad of bedwetter. Oh, really? Serial killer. Okay. Yeah. Her mother punished her horribly for her sins. It has been suggested that she also suffered from Munchausen's by proxy. Okay. Because at one point, her daughter attempted suicide by eating a bunch of pills. And one time, she accidentally threw her out a window. I don't know how you accidentally threw your kid out a window. No, no, that's not an accident. Come on now. Yeah. Mary Bell also had problems at school, where she was seen... Killing a baby bird and other small animals. Oh, geez. There's, there's, two on there's the another triad. sign, yep. When she was once in trouble for throttling a classmate, she didn't seem to understand the seriousness. When her teacher asked her, you know you could kill her, did you know that? She just didn't understand it at all. When talking with counselors, she told them that she was in a constant state of nothingness. The only time that she felt anything at all was when she was causing pain to other small children or by killing Small animals. Wow. Yeah. All right. And this is, you know, at the age of seven, eight, nine, ten, you know, like around there. Yeah, you it's horrible. Little girl. Yeah, my, my kids are that age now. Yeah, yeah, I remember my kid was that young. Jeez. I'm going to say this now. Mary has something wrong with her. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this has already been established. A little problem called psychopathy. Yeah. Nowadays, we'd be getting her help because they would see the signs, you know. Yeah. And teach her how to feel in a healthy way. But back then, child psychology was in its infancy. Mm -hmm. Was Mary Bell born bad? Or were her many years of abuse and ridicule to blame for her crimes? We'll see. Yep. On May 25th, 1968, the day before Mary turned just 11, the body of four-year-old Martin Brown was discovered in a vacant house. Oh, man. At first, it was ruled an accident. Because the boy was found with no marks on him, and an empty aspirin bottle lay nearby. It was assumed the boy had accidentally ingested a fatal dose. Okay. When a doctor noted to the police officers that Martin could have been strangled to death by another child without leaving any marks due to the small hands. He wasn't taken seriously at all. Really? 
To assume that is a sick doctor. Well, you got to say, I mean. Yeah, but, I mean, come on. <laughs> he was dead on. He yeah. was dead on. Yeah. In the days after the death, Mary Bell drew an exact replica of the crime scene, pill bottle and all, at school. She, so she drew it. Yeah. And then, did, did anyone find it? Like, did she show yeah, it? Yeah, her teacher seen it. Oh, wow. But they didn't seem to think this is weird. I mean, who would? No. <laughs> yeah, who would? No, no, that's just normal stuff, right? Nobody would think that little Mary Bell would have anything to do with it. No, she's I mean, already she was been, just eleven. Yeah, and she's already been, you know, strangling kids and killing birds, and you know, ugh. strangling them purple. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Even though Mary was the killer, she was not afraid and led the boy's aunt to the body, telling her, "I'm sure you're looking for him. Here he is." And then, in the following days, she would be heard constantly patronizing the family with taunting questions regarding little Martin's death. Wow. Yeah, she's literally a psychopath right now. She literally inserted herself into the investigation to feed her narcissistic ego. Yeah, she really wanted to know what was going on. Yeah. Mary did nothing to conceal her ill intentions, bragging about murdering a boy in the same building as poor Martin was found. To top it all off, less than a week after his body was discovered, Martin's mom answered the door to find sweet little Mary Bell there, and Mary asked to see Martin. The mother, confused, thinking that Mary must not know of his death, informed her. Mary replied with a shit-eating grin. I know. I want to see his body in the coffin. Wow. Yeah. Because this is when they would have the body in the house before the funeral. And okay. then put it in the, and then bring it out of the house. Oh That's what gosh. they did back in, the, you know, back in the day. Okay. So she was hell-bent on torturing this family, for sure. Yeah. I mean, hell-bent. Martin was laid to rest in a pauper's grave with no marker and only the flowers that his mother would leave for him. Oh. Four years old. Jeez. It's really, truly tragic. Yeah. Mary would soon show the people closest to her the mistake they made by just shaking their heads at her and doing nothing. <laughs> nobody protected Mary from the onslaught of abuse at the hands of her mother, and nobody would be protecting these children from Mary. Brian Howie was only three years old when he met his fate at the hands of Mary Bell. Oh, no, no. Three years old. <clears throat> July 11th, 1968, she brought her friend, Norma, with her to get in on the action. I just feel like we're talking about adults when really this is like small children killing even smaller children. Yeah, I mean, this is... Uh, why, why would we, get, we just got to do these... These horrible children killing like stories. I <laughs> it's fascinating. Though. She's like it is. literally. This is, this is like it's it's disturbingly fascinating. You know, it's it's. Oh. She's an evil Bart Simpson, a little evil Bart. Simpson. <laughs> oh my goodness, Bart well, Simpson wasn't evil enough. You know. <laughs> no. Whether thirteen-year-old Norma was scared of Mary Bell or she was in on it, we'll never really know. Mary was a leader, that's for sure, and uh, Norma was not. Once the three. We're alone, Mary wrapped her hands around the little boy's throat. Once dead, she mutilated him on his genitals with a pair of scissors. Oh, my God. Mary was in the darkest possible way, taking back control, and the darkest and most evil way, she was punishing the world for the horrors that had been done to her. Yeah, well, yeah, but she's taking the aggression out in the wrong way. Definitely. I mean, she so would she be getting just... help these days. I mean, everybody would have seen the signs, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, they would never get past her killing the first small animal, doing something, or choking the first kid out before yeah. she'd be in therapy every day. Oh, yeah. Out of the mother's house. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. But it was like, this was a poor, the poorest neighborhood in Newcastle. Okay. And it was after, you know, after the war, none of this part had been rebuilt. There's rubble. You know what I mean? It was just the ghetto. It yeah. was the ghetto. Okay. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So. And it was like, they let all the kids run around, you know? It was just like tons of brownstones on either side, okay. like that, and then they would play in the streets and play in the rubble. And the kids could do whatever they want. They could do whatever it they didn't want. even matter. Yeah, it was like yeah, the neighborhood no, raised the kids. No supervision or anything. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. She marked her work with an M on his body. She left with the scissors. She would also punish Brian's family in the same way she did Martin's. <laughs> she offered to help find Brian and led the family on a goose chase before finally taking the boy's sister very close to his lifeless, mutilated body. Mary was definitely taking back control over her life by taking the life of another and having that power over their family. Definitely. 
Mary was absolutely disappointed when she was unable to steer Brian's sister to his body before the sister gave up and went home. The police zeroed in on Mary Bell and Norma rather quickly, which is surprising because they interviewed 1,250 kids, and somehow Mary Bell and Norma were the only two out of all of them that stood out. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Due to the way the children acted when they, along with many other students, were interviewed, like I said, they were acting jumpy and even excited to be interviewed by police. Mary couldn't help herself, and she had to insert herself by telling the family of Brian that she knew something very bad that Norma had done. Oh, wow. So she's, she's trying to push it on Norma, huh? And then second, by telling the police that she knew of an eight-year-old boy that had committed this crime from the neighborhood. When it was proven that the boy was not even in town at the time, this made the cops look at her because she s- described the scissors to a T that the boy was carrying around. Oh, wow. Yeah. She's not very smart at uh, covering her tracks, huh? No. <laughs> Thank God she started at 11 and not 30 because she probably got, never got caught. Right. On the day of Brian's funeral, Norma told the police that Mary had killed the boy and taken her to see the body. Norma cracked. She was able to take the investigator to where the body was and led them to where the razor blade was hidden. She was giving them everything they needed to implicate Mary, but at the same time, unknowingly herself also. She was telling them things that obviously someone would have to have been at the scene when the crime was committed to have known. Norma told the police that Mary strangled the boy. She also told the police of the many crimes that Mary had committed against other students. Dobson said, that's the investigator, Dobson said that the day of the funeral, when they would bring the coffin out of the house, and he seen the look on Mary's face, that he knew he had to take her in immediately. She was just sitting there laughing and rubbing her hands, like, maniacally. Oh, jeez. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can just picture it in my mind. Oh, my God. All she needs is, like, an evil cat. Now I'm, seeing, now I'm seeing Bart Simpson doing that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the police were not ready for what they would find out about this case and about Mary. Mary led the boy away from the town with offers of candy. And once she had Brian alone, the little three-year-old boy was choked out over and over. So she would choke him out, let him come to, and then torture him. Oh, my God. She told him, oh, you have a sore throat. This is how I have to help you. You have a sore throat. I got to help you. Wow. Yeah. It's crazy. So she's choking him out over and over. Manipulative and just pure evil. Yes. So she choked him out until her hands were white. Her knuckles were white, Norma said. And the boy was dead. Then little Mary Bell threatened Norma not to say a word, or else she would be next. Then she brought back scissors and cut his hair for some reason, and then mutilated him right there in front of Norma. Would she take like a trophy or something? Yeah. Huh. And so they think that the mutilation of the genitals is what somebody that like is abused by men mm-hmm. at a young age. Yeah. So she was like taking back. Her power by demasculating yeah, that, that little sense. boy, yeah. you know, which yeah. I think is definitely true. Norma did nothing to stop any of this, but what would she have done, really? Well, Mary yeah, would have she, killed her, too. Yeah, she didn't want to killed. I mean, but still, I mean. Oh. Yeah, it's sickening. I don't know what role Norma played in all of this, but she was there for sure. I mean, I don't believe that she physically harmed Brian, but from what I have read, I am sure she helped lead the boy away, definitely. Because mm-hmm. kids did not want to go with Mary. Mm-hmm. You know, they would, they, cause she was mean. Everybody knew in the neighborhood that Mary was no good and they she knew. nobody wanted to play with her. They knew she was the evil Bart Simpson. <laughs> they knew, you know, and Norma is Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> Norma was treated as if she had some sort of mental retardation. Okay. She was handled by the prosecution in a much different way than Mary. All right. Mary Bell and Norma Bell, they both had the last name. They're not related. Okay. Were brought to trial for the murder of Martin Brown and Brian Howie on December 5th, 1968. The trial would last only nine short days. But the media attention, although mild by today's standards, was generating increasing interest. I mean, everybody was like, what do we do with this? these kids? You know, yeah, kids I mean, killing kids. This wasn't yeah, happening at the time. It's yeah, not like now. This is, this is like, how do you handle a, an 11-year-old who's murdering? And she's still 11 now, right? Yeah. 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 And uh, Prosecutor Rudolph Lyons opened the trial by suggesting 
that whoever murdered Brian Howey also killed Martin Brown. Mm -hmm. Lyons methodically recounted the suspicious behavior of both girls at the scene of Martin's death, how they plagued the mourning family with their morbid questions, and how they vandalized the nursery the next day, oh, leaving notes oh. that amounted to a confession. Okay. So they were leaving these notes about the crimes, and like she would write one word, and then Norma would write another word, and then she would, because they thought that would throw off the police, but they just may have to handwriting to both of <laughs> yeah. them. Yeah. That's yeah. why Norma was a little bit more involved than yeah, doing yeah. nothing at all. You know yeah, I mean? I mean, she was she was definitely involved. I mean, who knows if Mary was, you know, basically holding a knife to her throat. But She was an accessory after the fact, yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. For Norma, these notes were the most damaging to her innocence. Mm -hmm. Handwriting analysis had verified that Norma written that I murder so that I may come back now. If Norma was truly innocent, why would she have part in writing these notes? How did Mary know that Martin had been asphyxiated? This was not public knowledge. Yet she demonstrated to the Howies how Martin was strangled. Forensic evidence also implicated Mary. Gray fibers from one of her wool dresses was discovered on the bodies of both the victims. Mm -hmm. Fibers from Norma's maroon skirt were found on Brian's shoes. Although there were doubts about Norma's guilt, Mary was considered guilty right from the get-go. Okay. According to many who were at the trial, the issue at stake was whether Mary was a sick little girl or a monster, a bad seed they were calling her. Mary's family presence at the trial certainly didn't help her case. Her mother, Betty Bell, disrupting the proceedings with all her wailing and sobbing during testimony, okay. like a soap opera, you yep. know what I mean, just going nuts. And then she would storm out of the trial, only to come back in, you know, later. And Mary Bell's father just sat there, you know, quiet. Mary was described as very pretty and intelligent, with dark hair and sharp blue eyes. And if you see pictures of her, she looks evil. Yeah. She looks evil. Which... This is a quote, and anger looked emotionally blank. Observers in the courtroom were watching her with a horrified kind of curiosity. For such a manipulative and cunning little girl, Mary knew nothing about attracting sympathy. Nothing. Mm -hmm. At one point, Mary told a police officer how a woman up at the gallery smiled at me, but I didn't smile back. This isn't a smiling matter. Like, no. No. I agree with that. Yeah. The jury wouldn't like it if I smiled, would they? So she's, you know, she's very self-aware. Yeah. You know, Norma, on the other hand, was surrounded by a much more sympathetic family. She okay. came from a better family to begin with. Mm -hmm. She was the third of 11 children oh, wow. and reacted to evidence and testimony with a more childlike combination of fear and nervous tears. Mary was composed and brimming with logical thinking about the whole matter. Why did Mary ask to see Martin Brown in his coffin? We were daring each other, and one of us did not want to be a chicken or something, she explained. I'm drawing Mar Martin's body with incriminating knowledge of the crime scene. Oh, just rumors, she said. People were just saying there was a bottle of tablets and things spilled out of them. It was just to make it look better and all that. She had told that was just to make it look better in that. She had told the house that Norma killed Martin because I had an argument with Norma that day. And I couldn't think of nothing else to say. Mary got the idea that Norma killed by strangulation from TV. You see that on television, on the Apache and all that. That's what she said. It was truly a sight to marvel. These two children just battling it out in the courtroom. Mm -hmm. An 11-year-old and a 13-year-old. Just one blaming the other, you know. What would be the worst that could happen to me, Mary Bell said? Would they hang me? <laughs> oh, jeez. Craziness. It's a craziness. Yeah. When the time came for the closing arguments... The prosecution characterized Mary as a fiend. Poor Norma was herself a victim of an evil and compelling influence, almost like that of a fictional Spengali. In Norma, you have a simple, backward girl of subnormal intelligence. In Mary, you have an abnormal child, aggressive, vicious, cruel, incapable of remorse, a girl moreover possessed of a dominating personality, with a somewhat unusual intelligence and a degree of cunning that is almost terrifying. In attempting to rescue Mary from being cast off as demonic, a bad seed, the defense posed broader questions. Why did this happen? What made Mary do it? It is very easy to revile a little girl, to liken her to Spengali, without pausing for a moment to ponder how the whole sorry situation has come about. And they would not let any evidence in of her mother abusing her. None of that was let into really? the trial. 
So they had no idea where this girl came from. They just yeah. think just this girl was like born evil. Yeah. So she's just cast to be a, a demonic child, basically. Yeah. They have no idea what this woman or this little girl has gone through. They have no idea. Yeah. Wow. The jury, which consisted of five women and seven men, took under four hours to return a verdict. Norma was thrilled when she was found not guilty of manslaughter on both counts. Not guilty, so she got nothing? Mary Bell was, yeah, she got probation. (laughs) So she got probation. Mary Bell was found guilty of manslaughter because of diminished responsibility in both Martin's and Brian's death. Justice Cusack pronounced a sentence of detention for life. While Mary cried... Uncomforted by her family, her detention would be for an indeterminate amount of time. Okay. Norma Bell was later given three years probation for breaking and entering the Woodlands Crescent Nursery and placed under psychiatric supervision. So she got off with a slap on the wrist. Yeah, yeah. You know, that was it. Because Britain was not used to incarcerating little girls who murdered, Mm -hmm. the question of where Mary should be placed sent everyone scrambling. Prison was out of the question for an 11-year-old. Yeah, she's not going to prison. Mental hospitals weren't equipped to take an 11-year-old. She was too dangerous for an institution that housed troubled children. Eventually, the precocious murderess ended up in an all-boys facility. Really? That must have been nice when she hit puberty. Yeah. Mary's incarceration is fascinating because at some point she apparently reformed. When she was released at the age of 23, she went on with her life and had a daughter of her own. She claims to be a completely different person than the psychopathic child killer she once was. She doesn't take... She takes all the heat now. In interviews, she does take the heat. Okay. But she won't talk about the murders. Okay. She won't say what she did. She'll never... You never hear her say, I put my hands around her throat. It's weird. Okay. But she doesn't try and say, I didn't do it or nothing like that. You know, it's like, can a violent sociopath be cured? I mean, whether, whether her conditions led her, right, to becoming the sociopath... That murders, you know, and feels like that way of a serial killer, can that be cured? You know what I mean? Can you go the opposite way and then... I don't know. Maybe if she got it out young enough. I mean... I mean, they said that she had a moral awakening, you know? I mean, is she putting on a really good act? Sociopaths are experts at duplicity. You know that, you know? In any case, her experience while incarcerated is worth reviewing. So when she was incarcerated, her mother would come and visit her, you know, a good mother that she is. Yeah, <laughs> my good mother. Sneak in lingerie and make her take revealing pictures so that she could later sell them to tabloids. Really? Yeah. So her mother was just banking on her. And she would she would write poetry mm-hmm. to get out her feelings. Her mother told her to write this poetry, get out your feelings, sell it to the tabloids. So oh, once she found out that, she had nobody to talk to. Mm-hmm. She nobody on the outside. Yeah. She was being raped. Yeah, I can imagine. By the COs, the correctional oh, officers. Oh, jeez. And she was in an all-boys institution. She was also raped. Yep. So her whole life, up until the age of 23, she just had men just completely crush her down to nothing. Yeah. So, I I mean, how do you get fixed by that? That's That's the the question. Yeah, that's the thing. That is like the the whole thing of this case is like, okay, they let her out at 23. Mm -hmm. So what they do is they give her a new identity. Mm Mm-hmm. People find out about that identity. They put her in witness protection and just give her a whole new identity in life again. To per- so and she's just on the run her whole life, basically. Yeah. With her daughters. She has two daughters, I believe now. And then it is these daughters do deserve the protection. Yeah. Absolutely they should not they be, do. People should not be coming after them no, for what no, their mother absolutely. did. Right? But you know how the media is. I mean... They're they're gonna terrorize whatever they can. They're gonna they're gonna pull stories wherever they can. So if they find out who she is, oh yeah. Daughters and everything. But from the victim's point of view, Mm -hmm. she's out, okay? She's living her best life. Oh, yeah. You know, they're seeing, oh, she's had kids. My kid's never going to be able to have a kid. That is true. My kid's dead. Yeah. You know, my kid didn't even get to graduate kindergarten. It's giving me freaking goosebumps. But what, uh... And then she's out there just living her best life. You go, you go to the thought of, um, you know, kids will be kids, but this goes a little above and beyond that. Should they you know, have hung her, you think? At 11? Yeah. I don't know, man. I mean... If you or I did that back then, we would have been hung. Well, we'd probably be in jail for the rest of our lives. I mean, back then, the yeah. 60s, they would have hung us. They would have done something. I don't know. I just... I feel bad. Don't get me wrong. I feel bad for the fact that 
she has the worst kind of abuse from a mother. Yeah. The worst. Yeah. Not yeah, only did she, she abuse her, she let men abuse her sexually at a very young age. She was made into this psychopathic person. Yes, okay? she was. I do 100% believe that. But once you are that psychopathic person, are you not responsible anymore for what you do? Well, of course you are. You're still responsible for everything you do. I mean, I mean, obviously she she was able to figure out that she was wrong because she when she got out. I mean, obviously we haven't heard anything from her. She hasn't been killing that we know of. Um, so who knows? Maybe she did figure out that she was wrong. And even if she did, I'm saying even if she did figure out she was wrong, plenty of people are in jail right now that figured out they're wrong and they're never getting out. Now you're right about that. I mean, I just don't know where I lie. I'm not saying one way or the other. I'm just saying it's an interesting conversation. But you you go to that point where you have the innocence of a child and you, you know, the not knowing, you, you know, it's, it's, that's a really tough... Uh, what innocence did she have, though? She, she Well, she didn't it have any... It was ripped from her. Right, right from the beginning, she didn't have innocence. So I just don't... I don't know. If that was my kid she killed, obviously, I wouldn't want her out having kids of her own. No, 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 yeah. You know I, what I mean? Enjoying life, going out to eat... Having a house, having the government provide you with a place to live and a new yep. identity. Oh, yeah. And my child doesn't even have yeah, a you, gravestone. Yep. You know? It's like, but I don't know. I think that if I had to choose one or the other, if you, you had to make me choose, I would say they never should let her out. They never should let her out. She killed a three-year-old and a four-year-old. You see, I, I think I'm on the other end. Are you? Yeah, because as... She was turned into the psychopath because of how traumatizing her life was. And her entire life was traumatizing from beginning to end. So does she deserve to have the rest of her life ruined? Absolutely. So she doesn't get, she doesn't deserve the luxuries. No. But I mean, kids do stupid shit. Yeah, I mean, I agree with that. But if it was, so, you'd feel that way if it was her kid that she killed, your kid that she I killed can't too. Even, I can't even say that. To you be know? honest with you, I I can't, I can't say one way or the other. I was totally on the side of no, no, they had to let her out. I, I going into this case, knowing the little bit that I did, I was like, it makes sense to let her out. But then you're watching these interviews yeah. with these families, yeah, and they're crying and they're like, she could live down the street from me. I wouldn't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, my kid is never going to have kids, and she's out there having kids? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I mean, that's 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 the that's the terrifying fact, you know? It's like... She's kept her nose clean, though. You know, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I really don't know. I, I, I don't think I can say one way or the other which way is right or wrong, because it's so hard to say. Because she she did it at such a young age that it, you, you got to wonder, like, was it really her? Did she? I mean, she was so messed up in the head that what what control did she really have? She didn't have any any therapy to help her. She didn't have anyone to help her. So she just, I don't know. Neither did these little kids. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely you right. Know? They And those kids deserve all the justice in the world. And now, not only did they lose their kid, but then you're re-traumatizing them by letting them Letting her out. Yeah. You know, that's the thing I don't get because you're, yeah. like you're, so yeah. you're choosing the rights of this one person over entire families Who now being right. re-terrorized yeah. again by her actions. Yep. I, see, that's it's, what I just, I can't, let, I just say let her rot. Let it, her rot, man. That's, it, I mean, that's just me. It's a double-edged sword, man. One way or another, it's both ways are. I mean, they, I don't know. I'd like if you guys would let us know. Yeah, let us know how you feel about this case. I mean. It, this is this is one that's, I mean, does she deserve to be out or not? Yeah. And does eleven year old know enough to not kill when they've been tortured their entire life? And do they do they deserve to do they deserve a second chance after being tortured? That's the question. I mean, when I picture her as little Bert Simpson, I'm like, let her out. He's cute, but when I think of the real girl and I just think of her evil eyes. Even when they show pictures of her as an adult, she's got those dead blue eyes. Yeah. That just stare right through you. It's like, for me, like once a psychopath, always a psychopath. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just because you stop killing doesn't make you any, you know what I mean? I don't know. I just, I just can't. I, I was totally on the other side. And then after those interviews with the family, I'm like. So this, this child got her childhood ripped away. So she then ripped away two other childhoods. Yeah. 
So and ruin families. Yeah, of course. You know, I mean, of course. But as a plenty kid, of people are abused. I'll say that too. Plenty, absolutely, of people are abused and don't do this. Yep, you're one hundred percent right. I was abused as a child, yeah. and I never, ever took it out on anybody else but myself. Yeah, you're one hundred percent right. So I could speak from experience. I didn't have this kind of stuff happen to me, but I had pretty horrible things happen to me when yeah. I was a child, and I never would do something like this. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So where 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 does the line get drawn? That's the question. And clearly, they thought it was twenty three. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she okay, twenty five to life. I could see maybe. You know, but so she served 12 years, 12 years. That's what those little kids lives were worth. That's it. And she got witness protection. You know what I mean? Like you're yeah. literally paying taxes. Your money is going to protect the person that killed your kids. But I'm also thinking about those 12 years of constant torture. Yeah. I mean, she didn't have, she didn't have a good in, in this yeah. all boys yeah. detention center. So Definitely I, not. The fact that she got out and was able to keep her nose clean is pretty, uh, pretty impressive. She did escape um, once. Did she? So she oh, escaped okay. with another girl and then went out for like a night on the town. So there was other girls in this all boys facility? Or I don't know if this girl picked her up. Yeah, I don't know. Now that I think about it, because they definitely said girl. Maybe later on as uh, things progressed. Maybe she got transferred over to a... Yeah. Yeah, okay. And she escaped and lost her virginity. The guy that she supposedly lost her virginity to, because it was the first time that she had consensual sex... Came out and did all these stories and took total advantage of the situation. Right, right, they right. They can't yeah. get enough of hearing about Mary Bell and over there. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. I mean, it's just horrible. Everybody that ever should have cared for this girl totally took advantage of her. Mm-hmm. You know, a hundred percent. You know, her father was just an alcoholic piece of crap. You yeah. know, that her mom even denied was her father at all. Said, that's oh. not your father. You know, that kind of thing. Okay. So he was no good either. You know, right. that's why I didn't put much of the story. She was just not... In the picture, yeah, because really. I didn't really hear about him till the uh, till the trial. Yeah, he was. Yeah, not, I, I expected him not even to be in the picture at all. No, but he came to the trial, I guess. But um, so that is the story of Mary Bell. Yes, it is. Was it everything you thought it was going to be? You did see your own research too. What did you? Yeah, do? yeah, I did a little bit of research. Um, just uh, you know, a quick YouTube video on it. Um, and, uh, it was, you know, the, the, uh, you did a much better job. Let me just say, um, the, the, st- the story was, uh, was mu- a lot better written and, um, yeah, she is, uh, she's a, she's a bit of a psychopath. Yes, yeah, she is. And, um, and the story just kind of, you know, you, you took me there, man. Thank you. Thank you. I, yeah. I don't know if that's a good I thing or a bad thing. <laughs> Listen, this is very important. Rate and review us, please. If please you like this that. podcast, if you want us to keep doing what we're going to keep doing, no matter what. Yeah, but. no matter what. You know, yeah. whether, whether you're like us or don't yeah. like us, we're doing them. <laughs> I don't care. Give us five stars. Subscribe. You know what I mean? Tell your friends. You know, we want to get out there, but we're going to be here no matter what for the people that are listening. And yes. we love you guys very much. Yes, we do. And we appreciate all the support. Yep. And um, if you want to write us, you can write us at murderincorporatedpod at gmail.com. Yep. And you can go to Murder Incorporated on Facebook, on Twitter. Anything else, buddy? I think you got a shout out for a couple of podcasts that help you start it up. Yes, I do. Oh, yeah. my God. I can't believe I forgot. I want to thank Mike Ferguson and Mike Gibson over at True Crime all the time. Thank you. You guys are the best. I literally can't tell you how much Mike and Gibby have helped me. They really, really have helped me out a lot. And I also... Want to thank, we're here for the booze. Yeah. <laughs> Download that podcast. Also a great podcast. I like them a lot. He does a true crime story and she does like a scary story, you know, like a, a ghost or a haunting. And they're both very likable. Cool. Very like a very cool. good podcast. Cool. So I wanted to thank them. And I, I truly, from the bottom of my heart, they really did help get this podcast going and help me with equipment and everything. And I really appreciate it. And um, I think that's it for us for this week. What yeah. Do you think, buddy? Yeah. I thought this was a good one, man. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Awesome. We'll see you guys later. Yes. Later. Bye.